Hi everyone, it's Steve here again. Uh, thank you very much indeed for the very positive uh, bits of feedback and uh, comments I got on my part one video on setting up a Padawan 360 system. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to look at the next lot of components, which is these things here. Um, this is a Sabertooth 32 um, and it's a 2x32 amp speed controller. Now what that means is that it's actually effectively two speed controllers in one. Uh, let's try and get a bit more light on it there if I can. Um, so you've actually got sort of two channels of speed control, which obviously for a two uh, dr motored drive system, like the uh, typical uh, tank steering kind of uh, system that we use in uh, droids and R2s and that sort of stuff, um, then that's a, a really nice little solution, um, very well respected in the community. Uh, we're also going to be using, in this particular build, uh, one of these. Now, this is a Siren 10, uh, which we're going to use for dome control. Now, the uh, the way that these things work is they are able to take serial commands from a microprocessor. Uh, the microprocessor we are using uh, is an Arduino, be that an Uno or a Mega. And what Arduino will do is it will output commands over certain pins and... Uh, there are something called libraries, and the libraries are a sort of set of, um, a little sort of pocket of code, if you like, that's already been written by typically the manufacturers or some uh, uh, people in the community, and the code will uh, send commands that these will understand and be able to interpret without you having to write lots and lots and lots of sort of lines to say if the, you know, if the controller is only up halfway on the speed, then only go at half the speed, things like that. It's all sort of uh, compartmentalized for you and uh, pre-written for you. So anyway, um, we're going to talk about the dip switch settings in a moment, which won't quite focus on there or there. Um, so we're going to do all that and do some cabling, and we'll be back in a moment. First up, we're going to spend a little time looking at the Siren 10. Um, on the wire connection side here, if you will focus, please. Thank you. Uh, you can see we've got an M1, B minus, B plus, and M2. Uh, pretty straightforward. B minus and B plus are your battery uh, minus and uh, plus or negative and positive wires. So whatever you're feeding your um, your sort of mains through your droid, be that 12 volts or 24 volts, you can run the siren up to 24 volts. So black wire into B minus and red wire into B plus. M1 and M2 are the outputs from the siren, and those will go to your dome control wires. Um, presumably you're running some sort of um, little uh, motor like a Palulu or a drill head or something like that, and that will only have two wires. It's a DC output, so you go M1, M2 to the wires on that. On the other side of the siren, you've got 0V, 5V, S1, and S2. Uh, 0V is... 0 volts or your ground, your common ground. 5 volts is a 5 volt output from here. So if you wish to power uh, something at 5 volts, uh, so long as it doesn't draw too much current, you can do so. So um, originally I had my um, Arduino actually pulling the 5 volts out of here. Uh, I've changed that now to run up 12 volts, but uh, you can do that if you wish. S1 and S2 are your serial inputs. So serial 1 and serial 2. Uh, typically, we're not going to be using serial 2. We'll just be using serial 1. So we'll explain that shortly. The last thing we need to worry about on the Siren 10 is the dip switches. And how we set those determines what sort of mode the uh, Siren 10 operates in, as it is quite a flexible little product. And we'll talk about that in some detail now. The Siren 10 does come with a handy little leaflet that shows you the various operating modes which it can do. Um, the one we're going to be interested in is this one here, the pack in the middle there, the packetized serial address 128. Um, if you're running on lithium polymer cells, you can also change a dip switch number three, uh, which will sense that your um, battery cell voltage is getting low and it will sort of do a cutoff as a safety feature of that. Anyway, we're going to go ahead now and set the dip switch settings to uh, match the diagram here, which is one down, two down, three up, four up, five up, and six up. So I just tend to use a small screwdriver like this one uh, to pop those into the correct place. So basically all I've done there from the default settings is I've moved one and two down and left all the other ones up. So now we're going to talk about the 
uh, battery connections and the motor connections on the Sabre 232. Uh, and as you can see here, we've got M1A, M1B, B+, plus, B-, minus, M2A and M2B. Uh, in the middle there, B- minus and B+, plus, you can probably guess this is your battery connections. Uh, now, Dimension Engineering, who make these things, actually recommend that you don't go through a fuse board and you go directly to your battery for the connections for that. Uh, personally, I've always gone through a fuse board and not had any problems. Uh, but I do run quite high amp fuses in there, about 30 amps, just to be on the safe side. Um, the input voltage for these can be anything up to 30 volts, typically. They do recommend an absolute maximum of 33.6, uh, but you can run them at 12 volts, no problem at all. Uh, 24 volts also is a very common voltage to run them at. Um, so your other connections, M1A, M1B, are for motor A and motor B. Um, with your positive and negative connections either side. Now there's no hard and fast way in which you determine which uh, connections goes to the A and B sides of both motor 1 and motor 2. Uh, just make sure that the, you do sort of connect M1A and M1B to the same uh, motor. So basically this is one motor, that's the other motor. Don't sort of uh, cross uh, contaminate them or cross-pollinate them, uh, that's not the way it's supposed to work because obviously don't forget your motors will be able to reverse. Um, so determining the right direction really depends, it's a little bit hit and miss um, because your motors will be sort of installed rotating effectively in opposite directions because they're on opposite feet. Um, so a little bit of trial and error will sort that out for you. Very straightforward. You can either switch them at this end or you can switch it at the motor end, depends on your connections, what's easiest for you. On the other end of the Sabre 232, you have uh, similar connections to the Siren 10 uh, with the addition of a USB port. Now, um, the nice thing about the Sabre 232 is that um, you can actually program it using some software on a laptop. Uh, you're looking for a program called Describe, D-E-S-C-I-R-B-E, -E, um, and that will allow you to actually talk directly to the Sabre Tooth, and you can sort of do things like uh, altering the ramp, what's called the ramp speed, which is basically how fast the acceleration goes. Um, and some other nice uh, sort of diagnostics and playing around with uh, software stuff. Apart from that, you have uh, a zero volts, which is ground, uh, five volts, which is an output. Again, you can output five volts. Now, this one will handle, I think, up to uh, up to an amp. Um, so you can actually power um, a reasonable amount through that if you wish. Um, S1 and S2, again, serial inputs one and two. We're going to be using serial one. Um, A2, A3... And uh, the final ones there, P1 and P2, we're not going to be using in our droids. Now, just to expand on that a little bit further, P1 and P2 um, can be used to uh, they actually power outputs. Uh, so you can use that to clamp regenerative voltage uh, because these are regenerative uh, motor controllers. Um, you can also use them to operate power brakes. So if you've got uh, something like a wheelchair motor that's got a braking system, you can actually power the brakes through that. Um, or you can actually just use them as extra power outputs. And all of that is a little bit beyond the scope of this video, but go and have a look in the Describe software and uh, that will help you out. You've also got um, a couple of status LEDs just down there, um, which will um, help you solve problems should you come to them. Dip switch settings sometimes can cause a bit of uh, confusion uh, with the speed controllers. And what I found uh, on mine, on my build, is that uh, one and two down and the rest up works just fine. So that's basically packetized serial, just the same as the Siren 10, because we're doing the same sort of communication uh, across to the Sabretooth. Okay, so off camera I've made some uh, wire connections. Uh, let's start off with S1 on the Sabre 232. The white wire over there is going into pin 4 on the Arduino through the hose shield, which is absolutely fine. Uh, we've still got our um, soundboard attached uh, to just my Acre speaker. And the wiring on the Sabre tooth, uh, I've currently got uh, just connected into the drive motors on my 39.1% ALT droid and some uh, rather hokey uh, connections into my battery. Don't look at those too closely. So basically you've got uh, red and black over there, red and black down here going off to the drive motors and then the center red and black on the saber tooth is going off to the battery i've just used some wago connector blocks to uh, make life a little bit easier um, and then 
yep, once you're uh, connected, uh, battery's going a bit low on the uh, controller, but you can hear I've still got my control over sounds. Now, I've also got drive, as you can see on the left stick. So, pull down, they go in one direction, go to the left, they'll go opposite directions, left and right, uh, to disable the drives, basically push the back button, oh sorry, no, wrong one, the, the uh, start button, the back button is actually what it puts into like an automated attract mode, so now basically after I've pushed the start button and the uh, indicator light is going round and round in circles, I've now got no drive on there, so if I push that again, you can see I get my drive control back. So very, very straightforward and simple on the Sabretooth. Um, next, we'll have a look at the Siren 10. Okay, so off camera, I made a couple more connections. Uh, so we've now got the Siren 10 plugged in. And um, if that will focus down there, you can probably see that is plugged the blue wire into S1. Uh, that correspondingly goes over to pin number five through the Arduino shield. So we've just got the one connection to that. On the other side of it, uh, M1 and M2 connect out to your motor. Um, and in this case, I'm just using a little geared motor I happen to have kicking around. And the uh, center two pins go to your power supply, your power distribution. And again, that's going through some Wago connectors to a same 12 volt battery that's doing everything else at the moment. Now, uh, the M1 and M2, the reason they're not sort of labelled up as plus and minus, as you might may typically expect, is because it uh, depends on the direction you want your motor to turn. So I have my uh, droid, uh, typically, being a, being a gamer, for me, it made sense to have movement on the left stick and dome control on the right stick. So basically, direct where you're going with that one, direct where you're looking with that one. Um, and as you can see... If I move that now, I get direction. So if you if your dome is turning uh, the wrong way to what you would expect, simply switch the M1 and M2 wires around on there. Okay, so let's uh, take it out of uh, safe mode, or put it into drive mode, which we do by pushing that one. That now gives me motor control on that stick, dome control on that stick, and we still obviously get sounds and things. And that's it. You're, you're basically good to go. So, again, pushing the start button disables the motors. So they are now not doing anything. But you still retain dome control. So you're still turning the dome motor around. Uh, and if you push the back button, you go into sort of a track mode, which will randomly turn the dome and randomly play sounds. Notice that the drive motors are still disabled whilst you're doing that now if you want to turn the controller off uh, you can do so by pushing and holding the two shoulder buttons and pushing the uh, center button down at the same time so let me try and do that oops a bit tricky with one hand oh I, I turned it off and turned it back on again let's just try that one more time there we go so that's now switched off which means uh, the motors will stop um, and that's it it's all put to bed so Thanks very much. Hopefully that was all very helpful to you. Uh, if you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the uh, comment section below. Or you can contact me through either the uh, .info or .net Astromech sites. I'm Baldur's on both. Thanks for watching and speak to you all very soon.